Frank, I think we got it together, man. I think we have it together now. Oh, we lied. I said, oh, we lied. And we are live. All right. Welcome to the Jesus of God Ministries. I am your host, Minister Derek. Some know me as Brother Derek. But I am your minister today. We always start out with a song. Give everybody a chance to come in. Hit that thumbs up, everybody. Thank you. 
All righty, y'all. Welcome to the Jesus is God Ministries. I'm starting a new YouTube church. I hope y'all join us every Wednesday evening and every Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. We will be having services, so I hope y'all attend. All are welcome. Any denomination, any religion is welcome. We deal with the word and what God's interpretation of the word is, not what man's is. So you can call it evangelical, Protestant, Muslim, whatever. We deal with this book and what this book says. We don't deal with the man and our own stuff. You got to do this and got to do that. No, we deal with the real word. And before we get started, to Liz and Naya, Ta-da! Told you we didn't need a tie pin. <laughs> Check it out. And tie don't move. <laughs> Looks nice, doesn't it? <laughs> That's why I hit it with the Bible. As y'all can see, this is the Bible. So, religious man always look better with a Bible in his hand, I always think. So without further ado, what we're going to study tonight you know, Bible study is not the same as a sermon. A Bible study is when we actually go in and try to get to know the people in this book. The sermon, we pretty much tell about the trials and tribulations and what the people in that book can show us how we should live. But the study, let's find out who we're we'll talking about. Our first ever Bible study is going to start with the first two people to ever walk the face of the earth. That would be Adam and Eve. And as y'all can see, we have a Simpsons, Simpsons uh, animation, some call it GIF, that I found. Last minute, too. I found that last minute. Don't ask me how. But it covers the topic that we're going to touch on. Who was Adam and Eve? We know what they did. But who were they? What were they like? How was it for them back then? That's what we're going to study. We're going to study our parents because they were the first two human beings on the earth. And our first study should be studying those two people. So without further ado, let's get to it. Now y'all can get your Bible. You don't need them. Everything will be on the screen that you need. But if you like to hold on to it like I do. You're welcome to go grab it now. As I get us set. Let me take that image out. Once again, y'all know I don't read these ahead of time. While the music was playing, I went on and loaded this up. As you can see, there's Adam and Eve. Now, what was Adam like? Well, let's find out. Did Adam have black hair, brown skin, and brown eyes? Was he 6 feet 11 inches tall? These are questions we cannot answer for sure because we were not there to see Adam. However, from reading Genesis and on with a basic knowledge of genetics, we can learn a lot about what Adam was probably like. Did Adam have a navel? But how? But how much detail can we go into concerning this man? Did he have a navel belly button, for instance? It is a question I've often been asked. Your navel is really a scar formed from the attachment via the umbilical cord to your mother. After birth, the cord was cut and where it was attached to your body. It shriveled up and formed a scar known as your belly button. 
Our anatomist, Dr. David Mixon, says that the navel area does not does have some physiologically function internally. More about that. So we can't be emphatic about how it looked on the first man. Adam was the first man. Now think about Adam. Was he born the same way you or I were? He certainly was not. He was made directly by God from the dust of the earth. In Genesis 2, 7, we read, Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. Adam was not born of a woman. He was the first human. In 1 Corinthians 15, 45, we read, Thus it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. Adam was the first man. This is an important point, by the way. There were no other human beings made alongside Adam, as Adam discovered when he named animal kinds. Adam had the first operation. If Adam, if Adam was not born of a woman, he would not have had an umbilical cord, thus no scar, and thus presumably not a navel. Now consider Genesis 2, 21-23. So the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. The man, then the man said, this is, this at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now, to the pro-blacks. When y'all say that the woman is God, how can the woman be God if she was made out of man? How can a woman be over a man if she was made off of the ribcage of a man? The next time you hear somebody say that, remember this. Genesis 3.20 states, the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. The first woman, the first wife, was made directly from part of Adam. She was not born of a woman either. Adam and Eve were unique. It would seem neither of them would have had a navel. When you think about it, that would have tremendous witness to everyone who saw them while they were alive. They had evidence that they were the first two people. Did Adam have one fewer rib than Eve? I've often had asked people, had people ask me, after reading the passage about the creation of woman, why men don't have one fewer rib than women if God made Eve from Adam's side of a rib? The way I answer it is this. If a man had an accident and his leg was amputated as a result, and then he married and have children, would all his children only have one leg? Of course not. This is because the instructions for how we are constructed are contained in the DNA and the nucleus of our cells and our genes. When God took part of Adam to make Eve, he didn't change Adam's genes. All the information in Adam's genes was still there in the core and of all the bones in the human body. The ribs are the only ones that can regenerate, grow back. If the sheath of tissue, periosteum, is left when the bone is removed. So Adam may not even have had one fewer rib than Eve for very long. So basically, the rib grow back. Eve was made especially for Adam. This was the first marriage. This is why Jesus in Matthew 19, 4, 6, reminded people that meaning of marriage is independent on the origin of marriage and the first marriage in Genesis. First marriage in Genesis. He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, Therefore, a man shall 
leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh so they are no longer two but one flesh what therefore god has joined together let no man separate now for all the people they got a million excuses as to why you can sleep around they need to read this scripture it's one of many but they need to read this scripture a man shall leave his mother and father and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh so they are no longer two but one flesh what therefore has god joined together let no man separate let's 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 tackle that for a second let me pull the chat up see if anybody got any smart comments nope let's look the woman was created out of the man she was create created to be the man's helper created to be the man's confidant created to be the man's companion Adam was in the garden and as he named all the animals all the animals had a partner every animal had a wife When a man and a woman sleep together, in God's eyes, they are married. Think about all the people you slept with, but think of the first one importantly. The first person that you slept with, that's your husband or wife. The first person that you slept with, that is your husband or wife. And it's registered that you are husband and wives. And every person that you slept with since, you have cheated. You have committed adultery on that first person you ever slept with. Now, what minister is going to tell you that? The truth. They're not. Because they want you to come back. But I'm telling you the truth. The first person that you ever slept with. You can, you can tell me about what the man government say down here. But up there. That's your husband or wife. That is your husband or wife. Now he says he's listening and learning. So to some of you people who. Think that it's cool to sleep with a lot of different people. Every time you do it, you commit adultery. Now, if that person who you have slept with has slept with other people, you might be there first, but they might have already had five or six before you came along. So you're not even considered you in a long list. Let that marinate for a second. So some of y'all think that if y'all do make it to the next level, that y'all are going to wind up being together. Suppose Jesus puts you with who they see is your husband or wife. What y'all going to do? I'm be like, I don't remember you. Oh, yeah, 1972. We, we was in the back of the stadium. Suppose they decided to put you with your first person you ever slept with. Just think about that for a second. But, but I'm married to Joe. That, that's not your husband. Your husband is Jack. But um, I'm married to Renee. Maybe so. But Mary was your first. That's your wife. See, when you have sex, the way that man and woman was created, when you have sex, 
That is your mate. This is the way God intended it. That's why women can be stoned for sleeping with men without being married. That's why there was the ceremony of the marriage ceremony with them having sex. And nothing to do with no long trail on the gown and nothing to do with rings, nothing to do with the best man and the bridesmaids. That's stuff that we added. All the way was the two families got together. If other people in the village wanted to come get some free food and drink, they came. Some people bought presents, some didn't. But the dowry was paid. The groom's father made a deal with the bride's father. And they paid, they called it a dowry. They paid whatever it was. It was camels. It was mules. Whatever it was. Gold coins. Land. Whatever it was. The father of the groom paid. They paid to get the bride they wanted. And they didn't pay for somebody that was already used up. They paid for somebody that was a pure virgin. Hey, what's going on, the driver? And if you... have already slept with somebody else and your hymen is broken. This is why women were not allowed to do strenuous activities back then. You didn't see women riding horses and women were kept. They were kept near the home. They weren't allowed to go out there and do, they might can go draw some water or something like that. But they were kept home. They were kept around the house. Y'all wasn't allowed to go do the things y'all do now. Bungee jumping and all kinds of stuff. You couldn't do that because horseback riding, camel riding. If your hymen was not there on that wedding night, that's your life. But they could kill you on the spot. The groom paid. For his wife, he paid for a prayer wife. He didn't pay for a used wife. Unless a woman was molested or raped, that was her only excuse. That was her only way out. If they had sex and there wasn't no blood, from the hymen, you were dead. Done. Seriously. They used to say, it, when I was growing up, they call it popping the cherry. If your cherry wasn't popped, you were killed. If you were lucky, you were banished. Meaning, they would put you out the village. And you would have to fend for yourself. And if you don't believe me, go watch Shaka Zulu and see what happened to Shaka's mother because she seduced the prince. He didn't want her. She seduced him. And that's why he didn't marry her. He didn't want her. I don't understand how that didn't stick in the, the minds of young women that watch that. If a man wants you, he's going to marry you. And I say it again. If a man really wants you, he's going to marry you and he's not going to want nobody else to want you. That's the man you marry. The driver says, whoever a woman share her blood with and her husband 
white sheets were given and people were examining. Yeah, the, the parents examining. And I can tell you, if they don't come out there, hey, waving that blanket, you bet to run. If you the female bride, you bet to run. Because the people of that village are going to grab you and they're going to throw stones at you until you don't move anymore. If you're lucky, they banish you. And you got to fend for yourself. And that's where the prostitute came from. The prostitute was a woman who no man would marry because she was used. But some married men will come lay with her and not tell their wives. Jesus and God see it. But the wives didn't, as long as they came back home, wasn't no question. Now, God made a concession because it was one woman to one man. God made a concession and said, as long as you keep her and take care of her and treat her like a wife, you can have more than one. And some people had two, three. Some people had five. You can afford them. Some people had 20. If he was a king, King David had 400. But you got to be able to feed them and take care of them. And they get the rank of your wife. But see, it's different for the man than it is for the woman because of that concession. Meaning that if a man sleeps with different women, if they are in the same household, he's taking care of them. And they have the title of wife. That's acceptable. But it's not acceptable the other way. So if a woman, let's say a woman got three men. One man paid the rent. One man paid the BG&E. The other man take her out to dinner. So she got three different men. And they all perform a different task and a different task. And she keeps them sexually satisfied. That's not going to work. A woman can only have one husband. You got a problem with that? Go see Eve. A woman can only have one husband. And she is too. Be docile and submit to that husband. One, because the woman was made from the rib of a man. And two, it was the woman that got the man to eat the fruit and caused all this trouble. So her punishment was that she was to be under her man. So you can have all the feminist walks you want. But it's written. Hey, how you doing, Sam? Oh, you like the new name? Yeah, um, I wanted to say minister from the beginning. But I was I, I just didn't want it to be ministries with minister that you got ministries with minister. <laughs> but then some people were saying that you only be you only been on de on ordained for a little over a week, and they feel that a pastor is somebody who's been ordained for at least you know four or five years. But it says that I can perform weddings, revivals, baptisms, funerals. I can be a chaplain at the jail or the hospital. 
says that I can work as a minister in any church and that I can start my own church. And I thought that if you start your own church, doesn't that make you the pastor? And I'm trying to turn this channel into a church. So doesn't that make me the pastor of this channel? But you know, some people got inconceived notions and I'm here to try to break those inconceived notions because those are the notions that are keep you from going to the next level. These are the notions that will keep you from going to the next level. And my job is to help you let go of those old things. As you keep letting people tell you, well, when I was growing up, this is what we did. You got to stand strong and say, okay. And if we lived with the Aztecs, it was okay to eat hearts of people you killed. Do you want to go do that now? It was okay when the Aztecs was doing it for them people. I don't want to go eat nobody's heart, but that's what they were doing. You know, Java says BD, God did that in the Old Testament to build up the population after the flood. Yeah, the, um, the driver, to be honest with you, the problem is women come out more than the men do. And I think that he realized the error that he made because it was an error. Women outnumber the men. What do you do with the extra women? Now, to make sure that life kept going and to make sure that man always had somebody to mate with, it makes sense that there are more women born than men. Women outnumber men. No matter where you go, women outnumber the men. There's a reason for it. So that we always got somebody to marry. The problem was they were coming out too fast. They were coming out too fast. Now I think that's why God allowed us to have more than one. And also, like you said, it did help out. Yeah, um, the New Testament, the laws changed. The laws really changed back. The laws really changed back and they came back to one. One woman, one man. But it's never been a woman with a bunch of men. That has never been the law. And that's why women who did do that, they was always laid, labeled as whores or strumpets or prostitutes. Because that's not what is expected of a young lady. But when Jesus came back, he brought it. One wife, one man. That was the way it was intended. And be honest. How many times have you heard women say, there ain't enough good men? I can't find a good man. All the good men seem to be taken. There's a reason for that. Number one, you ain't looking for the right kind of man. Number two, to make sure that there are enough wives to marry. But like I said, the next time you hear somebody say that the woman is God, especially when you hear them pro-blacks saying, the black woman is God, you just ask them. 
if the man, if the woman is made from the man, how can she be over the man? And the man was was by himself long enough to name all the animals before he said, hey, you don't have no mate. If y'all remember, even when he was doing the fruits and the grass and he started doing the animals, he said all the fruits will, will reproduce. And all the animals of that kind will reproduce. Say, so wait a minute. You don't have a mate. So you can reproduce. So he made Eve later. Man was around for a while. Before he decided to make Eve. So the next time somebody says that, you got the knowledge to shut them up. And when you hit them with knowledge, they got no answer. Telling the truth will always be what somebody try to make up. Because you can't poke a hole in the truth. But you can chop a lie down real quick. I watched a young guy go through a whole video telling you why. And all you got to do is just say one thing. The woman was made from part of the man. And the woman can't reproduce without the sperm of a man. So you can tell me a million things. Oh, the, the woman can... Can woman's body can can create the child and all of this without that sperm, she can't do nothing. Without that sperm, there's nothing. And her having to carry a child for nine months and go through pain and labor, that's her fault. Go talk to Eve about that. Cause that was the punishment. Pain and childbirth, and you gotta be under your man and do what he say. That's the punishment. Now the feminists come in, that's the punishment. You got a problem with that. Don't pick on your husband. Pick on God. Go take on God. Yeah, where you at, God? Because I don't got a problem with this. You go take it up with God. Because that's what he said. Well, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to do what I want to do. And do what you want to do while you get thrown in that lick of fire. That's my answer to you. But you're not going to convince me. I need to change. What I see is here written. I'm going to change it because of what you said. Who are you? Where are you at in this book? Where's your Bible at? You want us to do what you want us to do, then you should already have a, a new book for us to go follow. Otherwise, sit down and be quiet. Let's get back to where we were. Adam was the first farmer. In Genesis 2.15, we read, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Adam, the first man, was told to work and look after the garden God had made. This would not have been a chore. This would have been a joy for Adam. This was a perfect garden. There were no thorns or thistles, as these did not come until after God had cursed the earth. And because everything God had made was good, Genesis 131, Adam, the plants, the garden, and in fact, everything would have been perfect. How different this is to today's world. 
looking at the gardens and farming is very difficult, very different and difficult today. Very different and difficult. Adam was the first taxonomist. We are told Adam named many of the animals. Now out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was his name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. Man is always given names to things. Scientists who give names to different animals and plants are called taxonomists. Anyone who studies taxonomy knows how hard it is to remember any of those names. Adam would have Adam would not have had this problem because he was made perfect. He would have been as intelligent as a man could ever be. Plus he probably didn't have to name that many animals, only flying creatures and land animals, only created kinds. About the current classification level of family that God brought to him and not species. Adam was the first linguist. By the way, to name the animals, Adam must have been able to speak. He must have had a complex language right from the start. He did not even have to learn to speak as we have to. Though God created us with the capacity for language, he was made as a mature human being. How different was it for Adam? He awoke after his creation a conscious being fully formed, able to communicate and understand. Have you ever thought about the fact that Adam did not see God make him? The evidence that God created was all around Adam though. Adam did not even see God make Eve. This means Adam had to have faith in God's word concerning where he came from, just as we have to have faith today. But just like Adam, we have plenty of evidence that God created just the way his word states. Some people think that because Adam had to name those animal kinds God's brought to him on day six of creation, this could not have been an ordinary day. They think it must have been a long period of time. I am often told there's no way someone could name all those kinds of animals in one day. However, people who say this usually think that because they couldn't name and remember all the names, Adam could not either. The Bible, though, tells us the first man, Adam, rebelled against God and sin came into the world. Ever since, the creation has been running down. Not only are there no perfect humans in this world now, but all humans have lots of mistakes on their genes, mutational defects or copying mistakes that slowly accumulate in the human race. The first man had no mistakes when he was made. He was perfect. I think we can glimpse, looking through a glass dimly, so to speak, of what Adam was like by observing certain people today. I've met people who have, who have photographic memories, others that are brilliant artists. I've read about people that can play musical instruments brilliantly from a very young age, such as Mozart. Others can do extreme, complex mathematical computations in their head, which even advanced computers must be programmed to do. If we put all these talents, plus much more, into the person, I think we are getting close to what Adam was like. It almost makes you feel depressed, doesn't it? We had to realize that Adam was so much more intelligent than we are. Was Adam brown skinned? We can't say for sure, but I suspect Adam had a middle brown a middle brown skin shade. All humans have the same basic skin color, just different shades because of a brownish pigment called melanin. To put it simplistically, if we have a lot of this pigment, we are, very, we are a very dark shade. If we don't have much of this pigment, we are a very light shade. In the New Answers Book 1, it is explained that from two people having the right mix of dominant and recessive genes for the amount of melanin, all shades of brown in humans could arise. Thus, if Adam and Eve were both 
a middle brown shade, all shade from dark through to light could, could be accounted for in their children and future generations. For the same reason, Adam and Eve probably had brown eyes and dark hair. In a similar sort of way, if Adam had a blood group A and Eve had a blood group B, all the ABO blood groups A, A, B, B, and O could arise. Adam was the first father. Genesis tells us that Adam and Eve had many sons and daughters. Jewish tradition has it that they had 56 children all together. Remember, Adam lived for 930 years. I told y'all this, remember? If Adam and Eve were the first humans and all people have descended from them, Acts 17, 26, and he made from one man every nation of mankind, then originally brothers had to marry sisters. This is also explained in detail in the New Answers, Book 1. I told y'all that Adam and Eve had to have many children. How would you know? How would we know that Cain went to the land of Nod if there wasn't somebody already there? Somebody had to develop the, the, the land of Nod for Cain to go there. Now, did Cain have a wife already before he went, or did he meet someone who was a relative in the land of Nod? Now, somebody estimate 56 children. I know from just driving around my state. I know that you had Lord Baltimore. His name was George Calvin. But his title was Lord Baltimore. That's where you get Baltimore City. There are so many Baltimore street names. There are so many George street names. There are so many Calvin street names. But as the children grew up, they moved away from their parents. Who want to live by the dang on parents? Tell the truth. Most people can't wait to get, to get out. The lazy ones stay home. The ones that can't wait to get out. All of a sudden, you see Kent County. You see Montgomery. You see Clark, Clarksville. You see Am Amityville. You see Queen Anne County, which is probably named for a queen. You see... Um, Dorchester. I'm just naming you some of the counties and places. Clarksville. As their children moved, grew, and moved out, as the people came to settle in, they started to name the places after themselves or after somebody famous. And you can ride around and you can see the different names. Like Bowie. That name always stand out to me because of the musician Bowie, the, the rock star. What is it, Adam Bowie? The rock star. But Bowie. You know that George Washington. We got Washington County. We got about 10 Washington streets. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So it's not surprising that if they had 56 kids, that they would move out and say, look, we all can't sit around here and live all, you know, they're living off the land. We all can't work this same land to death. Let's move out. I don't want to live next to mom and dad anyway. I want to go do my own thing. I want to be the mom and dad in my house. I don't want them come looking over my shoulder. Let me check my chat real quick. <laughs> hey, how you doing, uh, Nico Love? Come join the party, Nico. 
Are we having Bible study? Are we studying our parents? The originals, Adam and Eve. So uh, come hang out with us. Um, this is our religious channel, but um, we also have uh, a regular channel, uh, Minister Brodero. We do Mobile Live, World Star, Family Feud. We cover the news and cover everyday topics. We also cover topics on how to improve our neighborhoods, how to improve our schools, how we can make a difference. So you're welcome to join us. Subscribe to the channel and come check us out. Look over some of our videos. We cover everything. Okay, you can't stay tonight. We'll come back. Uh, we have um, we'll have we have our Sunday sermon at one p.m. on this channel. Like I said, um, we're on every day on um, Minister Brother Derek. We have a channel called Minister Brother Derek, and uh, just type in Brother Derek, and uh, you'll see how many channels pop up. Alrighty, let's get back. Adam was the first sinner. Now, once again, y'all have to realize because the woman caused the man to sin, she forfeited her rights. So when they do the lineage, Normally, it's the firstborn. The firstborn is usually the most remembered. The firstborn. And the lineages follow the firstborn. But the women, unless they were great, they've done something great. Normally, they don't mention the women at all. So he's saying that Adam was the first sinner. What they're saying is, is that even though the woman sinned first, and even though she caused Adam to sin, she doesn't count. So basically, if Adam hadn't took the apple, if he just said no, the woman probably would have been replaced. Because she didn't really count. But because he did it, it mattered. So that was the first sin. Even though, and I'm not going to let, let y'all ladies off the hook, because it was y'all got him to do it, and y'all know y'all can get a man to do anything. Y'all know it. And he was dumb for doing it. But like I said, the man counts the woman doesn't she has a place but she doesn't count when it comes to accounting and lineage even though you gotta have them to have a lineage but they consider it second class and like i said this is the reason why we can't get along with people in the middle east now china and japan have let their women get a little bit, but you know, women are, you know how Japanese treat their women. That's true. They've eased up some because of our influence, but that's true. Mexicans have eased up a little on their women. Canada's eased up on their women because of our influence. You know, but in Genesis 2.17, Adam was told he could not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Therefore, if Adam being the head of the human race disobeyed, all of his descendants would have to suffer the consequences. I 
I don't know what that was. Adam, being the head of the human race, disobeyed all of his descendants. Disobeying all of his descendants will have to suffer the consequences. This is why Jesus came down. Jesus came down, was inserted into the womb of Mary, and was delivered like a regular child. And he lived for 32 years as one of us. So God took his alter ego, his workforce, his life force, the part of him that does things. Sent him down and he lived as one of us. And he showed us how we are to worship, how we are to carry ourselves. He showed at the thousands of years of trying to get you to follow laws and you can't do it. He said, this ain't working. So I'm going to punish you and let you be enslaved by the Babylonians and then the Romans. But I'm going to come down here and I'm going to show you how you should live. How I want you to be. And if you study Jesus' mannerism, the way he carried himself, how he prayed, how he took a secondary position to himself, When you hear of God doing something in the Bible, God's alter ego, Jesus Christ, does these things. He was there from the beginning. Go check out John 1. Gospel of John 1. Jesus was there from the beginning. God says, Jesus does. You have to remember, God's spirit is in all of us. Just a itty bitty bitty bit. But God separated himself. So God says. And Jesus does. That's why he's called the word. God gives the word. And Jesus does the works. So God can stay separate. And be holy. And be perfect. He took a part of himself. If he can make us. Oh why can't he make a part of himself. Let this person deal with these human beings. Because I'm not going down there. Getting my hands dirty. And Jesus made the earth. He made the sun. He made everything. Jesus was there from the beginning. Jesus is the alter ego. God is nice and perfect. Jesus ain't. Jesus will come down there and put something on you. People, people don't understand that. He will come put something on you. For those of y'all who don't believe, go read Revelations. Who's leading the battles? Jesus. Who's going to tie up Satan and, 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 and throw him in the pit? Jesus. Y'all keep thinking that Jesus was this wuss that just let the Romans kill him. And notice the word let. He let them do that. And then he came back and spit in their face. It was Jesus that appeared to Saul and took his eyesight. Saul was killing Christians left and right. Every Christian he could find, he was putting a blade to. Jesus pulled him up and converted him and renamed him Paul. His name was Saul. 
And Saul had money. Saul was Saul was high up in the military of the Roman army. Could pretty much go around and do whatever he want. Ran into Jesus. Then Saul had the problem. People were scared of him. Wasn't you killing us the other day? Now you talking about you love Jesus? We, what? You crazy, man? <laughs> did, you, did you bump and hit your head? As they would say nowadays. <laughs> so I need y'all to understand that. When you hear God being referenced into the Bible, it's really referring to Jesus just doing what God said. That's why they say no man has seen God. God has never come down. Jesus came down and did the work. Why does the devil go snitch on us? Because God can't stand to look at us. Why would he have to go snitch on you? If God see all, Jesus see all. But if Jesus don't tell God, he don't know. And that's the reason why his blood can cover you. Because even though you're a dog, you low down. You're a scoundrel. When you got the blood of Jesus covering you, when God looks down, he don't see the dog you is. He don't see the evil scoundrel you is. He see Jesus' perfect blood. He looked down and see Jesus. He thinks that you're perfect because he's seeing you through Jesus. Now, if Jesus can do all these things and still be perfect, and we can't go five minutes being perfect, this should show you how far off we are. In our sinful state, we can't do nothing. Somebody can knock on your door and hang you in a cursing argument. Jesus will say, hello, what do you want? Okay, we'll deal with this. You'll be like, what do you want, man? Knock on my door, knock like a night. <laughs> Just admit it. We're not perfect, and they understand that. But if you accept Jesus in your heart and let him go to work in you, when God looks down, when you're trying to pray to him, he don't see the people you hurt. He don't see the things you've done. He don't see the way you've done people wrong. He don't see that. He sees perfection because he's looking through Jesus' blood and he sees that that covers you. He just sees a perfect being. When you say your sins are washed away, he looks down, he doesn't see it. If, Jesus, if you're good with Jesus, God is going to look down and be able to hear your prayers because he don't see what you did last week. He's going to look down. He's not going to remember what you said 10 years ago about how I don't believe in God. There ain't nobody there. He's not going to remember that. He's only going to look down there and see somebody that's in harmony with Jesus. He's going to look down there and he's going to think you're perfect. And that's what you want. And that's how you get to the other side. So you can be the most honorary, honoriest person in the world. Find Jesus. Let him into your life. Let him activate the Holy Spirit. When God looked down, he don't see that. You could have just killed 50 people. When they look down, they don't see that. He won't see it. Why does it hard to understand? They see, he looks down, and he see perfection. Jesus is covering you. Jesus got your back. 
God looks down. He sees you through Jesus' blood. Jesus is your shield, your force field, your blocker. Jesus is a pair of sunglasses. No, I think look different when you look through a pair of sunglasses. He looked down and he don't see the evil being that you are. He sees somebody perfect that he can deal with. That's by design. But don't think that Jesus upon Jesus was a moya. He'll have a reason for doing it. But he the worker. That's why it's a father, a son, and the Holy Spirit. But it's all one person. But you got one person that stands above it all. One part. The other part, the alter ego, does the work. He's also called the light. Because his light can actually blind God into thinking that you worth something. When you probably the lowest thing on, on the earth, but you proved yourself to Jesus, he's going to cover you. How can that not make you happy? No matter what you've done. You get a relationship with Jesus. He got your back. How did that not make you feel special? How did that make you not want to go see, seek him out? How can you still go, ah, man, I ain't this here, man. How can you do it? Liz says she back had to put the food up. How did that not make you excited? No matter what you've done in life. You can come to Jesus and give you a clean slate. That's empowering. That's why it's called the grace of God. He know you ain't perfect. But he'll let Jesus wipe all that away. All that you've done. All you got to do, try not to do it. And if you do do wrong, Go ask for repentance from Jesus. He see you sincere, he will wipe it. And once again, you will have a pathway to talk to God and tell him how you feel and what you need. But you got to come to Jesus. I don't know why people act like religion is so hard. It's not. You just got to let go of the things you were taught. The things that somebody taught you when you were growing up. When those people were trying to get some money out your pocket or out your parents' pocket. They didn't necessarily care about you. You just were the dollar sign. That's what the teachers and the leaders of the law were. I purposely did not want the title. But now I'm ordained and I have it officially. And it scares me every day. Because I don't want to be like these preachers, these hustlers, these scammers. I don't want to be that. And ain't nobody going to come here and say, ah. Oh, you know, you're doing pretty good now, but if you did this, then, you know, you go a lot better. And if you if you had some women in here that were kind of loose, they would attract men that's thirsty and you'd have more people. I don't want them. I want them to come because they want to learn about how to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and God. I don't want them to come for some other reason. Well, you, you got some pretty women in here and... Pretty women always attract men and, and no. 
No, I, I, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that kind of minister. People say, well, you know, you can go to a church now and I would want to start my own. I wouldn't want to go up under anybody because then I have to do what they want me to do. And a lot of times it's going to be something that I'm not willing to do. I'd rather not have a church and have some good people to meet me on the next level than to have a nice church and money and nice suits and cars and then we all get thrown in a lake of fire. And they're like, but I listened to you, Minister Derek, and you let me right into the lake of fire. Really? No, I don't want that. Money ain't everything. It's not. Even though Eve was the one tempted by the serpent and the one who first ate the forbidden fruit, Adam is the one who brought sin into the world because he is the head of the human race and the one to whom the commandment had first been given. Romans 5.12 states, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Because of this sin of rebelling against God's law, God cursed the ground, caused thorns and thistles to come forth, and introduced death into the world. Adam and Eve died spiritually and started to die physically. The first physical death recorded is that of at least one animal when the Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skin and clothed them. It appears from the text that God killed an animal, shedding its blood, and gave a covering to Adam and Eve. This is a beautiful picture of something special to come. That shed blood would be a covering for sin. Now, if y'all notice, I've told y'all that the tribe of the Levites, they were the priests, the ministers, the reverends. They weren't allowed to own any property. They weren't allowed to have any jobs. The people took care of them. And this is where the selfishness of today comes in. People don't even want to support the church. But the church was specifically designed to be supported by the people. This is where the selfishness comes in about that topic. Most people don't want to support the church because, oh, well, they don't need my money. But that's what it was designed. That was God's intention for the people to take care of the church. And not only the church, they had to take care of the whole tribe of Levi. None of the people were allowed to work. When you gave at the temple, that was money for them to live off of. When you came and you did the sacrifices, and this is what Jesus replaced. If you sinned, and you wanted to atone for your sin, you had to get an animal, whether it was a deer or an ox or calf or whatever they had back then, as long as it was an approved animal. If you had money, you got a nice big fat sheep, or you got a nice, well, you couldn't get you to get a ram. It's got to be the male. Once again, for the females that say that they God, it, had, it could only be a male. Whether the sinner was female or male, it could only be a male. And the woman's father or husband could do the ceremony. So, so much for that woman idea. Uh, I'll shoot it down again. 
the priest had to sanctify, ask atonement for the sin. It had to break the neck and it had to be a perfect animal. No defects, nothing wrong with it. It had to be a perfect animal. Perfect. Even if it was a cheap pigeon, it had to be perfect. It couldn't have an eye knocked out or nothing. It couldn't limp. It had to be perfect. They would twist the neck. And they would let the blood flow. And the blood would hit the fire. And that animal would die for you. That animal would take the place of you. Because when you sin, the punishment is death. That animal would die for you. And they would take the fat of the animal and they would burn it on the altar. And as I told you, when we talked about, we were studying the other day about Cain and Abel. When Cain cooked the meat, the Lord liked the smell. And the Lord would smell that and, and he would go ahead and wash your sin away. Now, the, the, the Levites were allowed to keep the meat. And that's how they fed their families. When you brought the meat, the wives took it and chopped it up and rationed it out. And that's how they ate. We talking about a whole tribe. This is what they ate. Think about how many people sinned. This is how they got by. So the people took care of their whole tribe. So if you are a priest, a minister, whatever you are, the people take care of you. So if you will not support a minister, a priest, somebody who you actually enjoy listening to, you are sinning. Well, no, I ain't, but you know, I ain't got to give it nothing. You know, anyway. uh, guess what? Do that. And dig yourself right into the lake of fire. I'm just telling you the truth. You can dissect it and break it down and, and talk about it all you want. But the fact of the matter is, that was the way it was designed. And if you're not going to follow the design, then don't play the game. Just go ahead and get yourself ready to go into the lake of fire. Have all your fun now. And then you know notice that when you die, you're going to be tortured slowly. You'll be tortured slowly until Judgment Day. And then Judgment Day, you're going to get thrown in a lake of fire, and that's it. And that'll be the second death. And you'll be done. So, what would you want? You want to go to the next level? Never feel pain, never hurt, never have a problem? Or do you want to suffer until Judgment Day? And then get thrown in a lake of fire. That's your decision. I can't make it for you. I can teach you what you can do not to wind up there. But I can't make you. That's something you got to want. That comes from your soul. Now I said my turn to put the food away. And then said hurry back. All right. So let's continue on. Now, we said Adam is the one who brought sin into the world because he was the head of the human race, even though Eve was the one tempted by the serpent and gave it to Adam. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin. Let me say this again. Just as sin came into the world through one man and death came into the world through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sin, because of this sin of rebelling against God's law, God cursed the ground, caused throwing thistles to come forth, and introduced death into the world. Adam and Eve died spiritually and started to die physically. 
Adam and Eve died spiritually and started to die physically. Notice that. That's why you need Jesus to reawaken your spirit. To bring it out. To bring it up. To wake it up. If you don't know Jesus, you spiritually dead. The first physical we covered that already. When God killed an animal, shed his blood, and gave a covering to Adam and Eve. So actually, that was the first attempt to cover a sin. Hebrews 9.22 states that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. God requires the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. However, the bloods of bulls and goats was not good enough because a man brought sin into a world a man needed to atone, but it had to be a perfect man. If all descendants of Adam had now suffered from sin, how could this be accomplished? What do I teach y'all? That's the reason why Jesus died on the cross for us. His perfect body took the place of Adam's now imperfect body. Only two perfect men have ever been on this earth, Adam and Jesus Christ. Adam's sin became imperfect. Jesus never sinned. Jesus came, took the place of Adam and gave us through his Sacrifice the power to be perfect in the eyes of God. Does not what I say match up with what the scholars say? And if it matches up, it must be true. Now, First Adam needed a last Adam. What? God provided a second Adam. A perfect Adam who could be the perfect sacrifice. God himself came to earth as a man. Jesus Christ, the second member of the Trinity, was born of a woman to become a man so that the perfect sacrifice could be made. Jesus was God but he was also man as God intended man to be sinless. He was crucified on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood and paid the penalty for our sins and was raised from the dead, conquering death, the judgment which God had brought upon man because of sin. This is why Paul says, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. We just basically repeated what I said. We literally just repeated what I said. The Spirit told me what to say, and I said it. And they backed me up. We read further in Corinthians 15, 45 to 47. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. So the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam 
became a life-giving spirit. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. 1 Corinthians 15.26 states, The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And death is swallowed up in victory, Paul says. And we can say with him, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Christ paid the penalty. The last Adam has conquered death and provided a means of deliverance from the first Adam's fall into sin, resulting in a separation from God. This is the message of the gospel, but it isn't said to those Christians who accept evolutionary ideas are really undermining this message. Paul tells us in Romans 8.22 that the whole creation is groaning because of sin, awaiting the time that all things will be renewed. The death and the suffering we see in the world today resulted from the first Adam's actions. However, if evolution were true, and if the world today were an evolving world, which meant death and suffering have been God's way of doing things, then why did the last Adam need to come and die? Jesus. What is this world going to be restored to? What were the consequences of the first Adam's actions? Evolution undermines the gospel's messages. Evolution undermines any understanding of what Jesus did on the cross. Evolution stops people from understanding the meaning of the first and last Adam. When we take Genesis literally and understand about the first man, Adam, we then understand what the rest of the Bible is all about. Anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? For those of you that said I was crazy, for those of you who thought I was just talking outside of my mouth, just think about it. Oh, y'all got to remind me to change the branding. That's the old branding. Um, go to channel. We got to change the branding. There it is, branding. And we got to uh, remove. Okay. Now we got to add. Choose a file, and we need to go to screenshots. So they're gonna say it's too big. We gotta go to screenshots, and let's see if this uh this 16 by 900 might be too big. Okay, this is w which one do y'all like? Can y'all see this? Wait a minute, let me see if y'all can see this. Which um which one do y'all like? We got two pictures here. Which one would y'all like for the uh, banner? I mean, you know, for when you... It's in the, the bottom of the screen. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. Y'all remember the two pictures that we did today? You like the lighter one or the one with the clouds? Hello, I'm looking at the chat. Come on, I'm trying to get y'all to help now. It's five of y'all here. The question is, if you, if you look in the right-hand corner of your screen, 
Y'all know it's a little photo. Would y'all rather have the first picture that we did with the clouds and the cross or the one with the church? Which one would y'all like to be the photo at the bottom of the screen? Like where I am. I don't have no way to show the pictures. Would y'all ever have this one? Let me uh let me let me back out of here real quick. And you still did what you wanted to do. You still did what you wanted to do. Back out again. Exit. Let's go back in. That's not what I got on the screen. All right, let's say they both look good. This one is really bright. So I uh, will go, let me see. That looks good. Let me look at the other one. Oh, they both look good. Ah, oh, man. That rough right there. All right, let's go with the bright one. Save. All right, it, it's it's too big. Like I said, that's why I always make two, cause YouTube is a, is a joke. They're a joke. They always messing with you. So let's go into edit. Go into resize. Now we're gonna change it. We're gonna release the aspect ratio. Let's make it 300 by 150. Well, you can maintain the aspect ratio. So 300 by what? Say 300 by 150. Okay. Now, see how small it is? Now, we're gonna to go to file. Save as PNG picture. Right now, we're gonna have um uh what is that called? Um Brandon. So we'll call it branding name and see that any transparency will be lost, okay. Now, we got to go to YouTube copyright, and we called it Brandon, so it should be up the top. I think that's it. They had to write their Brandon name, and click it. It's still too large. We made it small. Don't cheat, man. Why are you cheating? We, we made it 350. Y'all too big. Let me see. They saying it's too big. Okay, we ain't gonna cry about it. We ain't gonna cry about it. Let's go back. Make it resize it. Make it uh make it one make it 150. Okay, and they saying 84. Okay. Alright. I'm with it. Alright. Save as. See, when you use your own picture, they give you a hard time. We'll save it as Brandon Name Final. Since they already got the name there, and hit save. Okay. Now. See them side by side? Can y'all see that? I don't know why that's not showing up on the screen, but okay. Brandon Name Final. Let's try it now. Oh, okay. It's uploading it. I hit save. Now, choose the start time. The entire video. And let's hit update. Can y'all see that on your screen? All right. 
All right. Now, if y'all want to see the new picture, you, you need to um exit the video all the way out and then come back in. And you should be able to see the new screen. All righty. So I'm going to do that. But that's what we did. We did the church. All right, listen. Only when it answered. And I did what she said. I told the church. What are you doing, man? All right, and let's bring it back. You always got to cheat. All right, look nice. It looks similar to the other picture we had. <laughs> All right. It looks similar to the other picture that we had. I think this tie blends in too well. No, it actually blends in perfectly with the shirt. <laughs> Me personally. Well we well we got a minute. Alright, y'all. Are we doing sixty-eight on band two? And then let me do fast reboot. So everything should be gravy. Alrighty, anybody have any questions? Our topic today was our parents, Adam and Eve, the first human beings, the first people to be on the earth. Not only did we learn about who they were, how they were made, we learned about how they sinned, and we also learned how God brought himself down in the form of Jesus. And Jesus became the new Adam. The new perfect man. But this was much more than Adam. Because this Adam had the ability to absorb all the sins from the past to not only take the place of our father, Adam, to absorb all the sins from all that were before him and to absorb the sins of all that's after him. For those that come after him, you have the opportunity to join him. And he can wash away your sins. He can make you seem perfect in the eyes of the Father. Basically, he has permission to trick the Father into thinking that you are Perfect. If that's not a magic trick, what is? That don't get you excited, no matter what you've done. It don't matter what you've done. It can be forgiven. 
no matter what you've done. It can be forgiven. Do y'all un not understand the power? Y'all not understand the gift that's being offered to you. I wish the words Holy Bible was bigger on this. But we only paid, we didn't pay nothing for it, so I can't complain. <laughs> I can't complain, we ain't paid nothing for it, so I can't complain. Now see, we was gonna get a tie pen. I love this. this <laughs> I got my belt. I can take it with me in the, into battle, in the battle for Christ. Love it. All right, we've gone 100. Y'all said no more than an hour and a half. We've gone an hour and 40 minutes. And I actually got two more things to look at, but I'm not going to hold you. I'm not going to hold you. I'm not going to hold y'all. But if y'all want to continue on. Uh-oh. Why I just freeze? It was only for a second, but why we just freeze? What's the problem? No, we didn't drop any frames. Uh, we just froze for a reason. I don't know why. We just froze again. Why are we freezing? Liz, what would you say if I told you that I got back in the house? Ten minutes before seven. What would you say if I told you that I was in here running around? I only spent five minutes. Five minutes on figuring out what we want to talk about. I spent more time trying to figure out how to get this pen to go through this tie. This tie is thick. <laughs> I spent more time trying to figure out how to get the tie, the, the pen to go through the tie, and then go to the shirt without sticking myself than I did anything else. I don't understand. You know, I, I, let me not say. Let me not question. But I can be honest with you. It took me seconds to figure out what we were going to talk about. It was told to me. I didn't have to see and go, well, what are we going to talk about? It was like, well, you were doing Genesis. And it was boring. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was boring. And I said, I like our style better. Where I talk and then we see if the scholars match up with what I say. And since we had we had done the first book of Genesis and our, um, our rehearsal Bible study last uh, Thursday, because we didn't make the channel until Thursday, so we just missed Wednesday. But we did a tryout. It's on the channel if y'all want to look at it. We did a tryout on Thursday. And we covered the first book of Genesis. We actually went through the whole book. And I said, you know, why not? It came to you. It was about Adam and Eve. Why didn't you just follow up? We had talked about God making the earth and then Adam and Eve. But what do we know about Adam and Eve? And so I thought, I would teach you. I would show you everything. And I'm talking, and it's amazing that I'll read something, and then I'll start talking. 
and then we go right into the next line, and what I said is right there. I love it. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's right there. It's right there. You know, I love doing this. Now, if, if y'all would like to help us get some more watch time, I'm going to end this and come meet me over on Minister Brother Derek. And we can come over and hang out and try to get some watch time. And we can see if the watch time changes. So meet me over on Minister Brother Derek. That they, they, they used to be the Bro Daryl show. It used to be the Master King, Brother Brother Pharaoh, or whatever. It's called Minister Brother Derek. Matter of fact, all oh, let me get y'all a link. <laughs> Thank you, Naya. All the credit go to the Holy Spirit. I like having a short name. Is it is it Minister Brother Derek or just Minister Derek? Is it Minister Brother Derek or just Minister Derek? Anybody remember? Here it is. It's Minister Brother Derek. Oh yeah, y'all. And uh, we need to, we need to change the banners. That's something we can do tonight. Y'all want to watch me? If y'all want to watch, that's something we can do tonight. We need to change the um the banner and the picture. For this, we we need to get this off here. Don't get me wrong, it's cute, but uh, we got the two Master King channels. Uh, we don't need to have this on here. We, we want to keep this channel pure. Because eventually, we might try to move. If the religion channel don't take off, we might move it over here. So let me get y'all a link. Copy. And like I said, please check out the community, y'all. Go in there and vote and, and leave some thumbs up. All right, y'all. There's the link. There's the link for where we're going next. No, we trying to keep it clean. I know it's rough. <laughs> but we trying to keep it clean. We trying to hit that 4,000. So we can be ready. By the 9th, Thursday, be here before you know it. Now, knowing YouTube, they ain't going to take it down until 11.30 of the night. Of the date. And we are not going to be able to stay on long. Thursday night. But I'm going to try and stay long enough. Because we have to. Um, I got to get up. I have to get up and um, get ready to go to the doctors. And I've been getting up at 11 o'clock. I got to be there at 1. I have to be there at 1. So. I'm going to go. I'm going to actually take that melatonin and try to go to sleep so I can get up and have enough time to ride out there, you know, and take my time riding out there and not be rushing. So, all right, y'all, meet me. Meet me on this channel. The link is in the description. Minister Brother Dark. Let's get some watch time. All right, thanks everybody for watching. To anybody else, if you enjoy this, please subscribe. We'll be here every Sunday and Wednesday night. Well, Sundays at 1 p.m., Wednesday night at 7. Now, we might change that to an earlier time if people ask. But you got to come watch, come subscribe, and come spend time with us. Spend time with us as we learn more and more about Jesus. 
How could you not want to learn about Jesus? How could you not want to learn about God? And in a fun and not boring way. And I break everything down for you and put it in common sense terms. Not the way I want you to see it, but the way it is. That's how you know when somebody sent and when somebody just trying to make some money. So, all right. See y'all on our channel. Give me 10 minutes. It's uh, it's 9.38. I'm going to set it for 9.45. All right, y'all. See y'all in a little bit.